So you guys ever wonder about how when you buy a new AV receiver, let's say it's 100 watts times 11 channels, 1100 watt receiver, right? You ever wonder about how that receiver only has a power consumption on the back panel of 500 watts? Somebody's gotta be lying, right? You'll find out. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. Today, I'm gonna to answer the question that's always being debated on the forums. I see people get into fisticuffs like it's a political thread. Hey man, you don't have this receiver that puts out all this power because the back panel only says 350 watts or it only says 500 watts. So it could only put out to the amplifiers, to your speakers, at least that less than that power because of efficiencies. Well, that's not true. And I'm gonna tell you why. This is actually a pretty complex topic it inspired me to write a whole article about it on audioholics.com and I give several examples on that article about how this power number on the back panel is derived. But I'm going to give you an answer up front so you don't have to necessarily watch the whole video to figure it out, but I hope you do watch the whole video because it is quite an educational experience that you're only going to get on this channel. No other YouTube influencer is going to be talking about these kind of topics. Okay. So in a nutshell, unless it says max power consumption on the back panel of your AV receiver, it is not the max power consumption. So that receiver typically can output more power than the back panel power rating when all your channels are driven. So let me explain exactly how that's possible. So I went and I emailed my friends at Sound United, you know, Denon and Marantz, because I have access to their engineers. I said, guys, I got this Marantz SR8015 AV receiver. I just reviewed it. Measured spectacularly. I was able to deliver, it was able to deliver 100 watts of channel with seven channels driven. That's 700, 700 watts of power to the loads. And with a class AV amplifier, you're looking at about a 70% efficiency under max power like that. So it was about 1100 watts of power consumption. Meanwhile, the receiver's back panel says it only consumes 780 watts. And I actually saw people on my YouTube channel, um, when I did this review, they were arguing with me that that's a max rating. There's no way your all channels driven could be 100 watts times seven. That's what inspired this video. And I wanted to di dive deeper into this topic. The reality is that back channel rating is based on, and I'm gonna read you the IEC 62368-1 safety standard test. And what that is, is the receiver manufacturer, when they adhere to the safety standard, they measure all their channels at one eighth power at the D rated power level that they think all the amp amplifier channels can operate. Now that's interesting to me because I always just assumed they followed the FTC guidelines where they would only drive two channels at full power and then work backwards on efficiencies to figure out the power on the back panel and just ignore the other channels. That's not the case. They're actually running every channel simultaneously because the whole point of these safety tests is to, is to study the temperature rise. So they have, to, they have to understand the reliability of this product, how it's gonna dissipate heat, not for a sweep test that's only a couple of seconds long or a couple of hundred milliseconds long, but actually in this particular test, they, they run this test for four hours long and they determine what that power level is gonna run at to determine um, the limits of their receiver, to determine when the fans need to turn on or if the receiver goes into too much thermal rise, it's gonna shut off. All this stuff is built in. A lot of people don't realize in an AV receiver, because you have all of these channels crammed into a chassis with limited heat sink area, you have to dissipate heat. So these companies have to be, you know, they have to be clever about that. That's why they have the fans. The fans are usually not on during normal operating conditions. The fans tend to go on when I'm doing my bench tests and I'm doing continuous power loading tests, but very rarely do you see a fan go on unless you're really cranking it up and you're watching an action movie or something like that and all the channels are just going at, at theater levels. So the way the safety test is, the way Sound United explained it to me, is they run these tests at a D-rated power for up to four hours long. And I verified the same thing that Yamaha's doing the same thing. And I wanted to give you an example. So I have the Marantz SR8015 that I wanted to show you here. Now that's a 140 watt times 11 channel rated receiver and its power consumption on the back panel is 780 watts. 
So Marantz derates the two channel power with all 11 channels driven. And they do that in this case, they say that this receiver can deliver 90.4 watts times 11 channels driven. That's impressive. So you take one eighth of 90.4 watts, that's 11.3 watts. Now, if you look at the, um, if you look at the efficiency versus output power curve that I have here, I'm showing you a typical class AB amplifier versus a class D amplifier. You look at those curves, and what you're gonna see is most of these receivers, like the Marantz, like, Mo like the Denons, like the Yamahas, like some of the Pioneers and some of the Onkyos, because some of them are Class D, but they typically, most of these receivers are still linear AB amplifiers. The problem with linear AB amplifiers is at low power levels when they're doing these tests, the transistors are almost always conducting, so they're very inefficient. So you can get, you know, you can get up to 60, maybe 70% efficiency on a class AB amplifier, best case scenario when it's operating full class B mode. But when it's operating at one eighth power, you're looking at less than 20% efficiency. And uh, Sound United actually told me what they do with their efficiency calculations is it's more close to about 17%. So you take that, you take that 66 watts, now you got to multiply it by 11 channels. That's about 730 watts. Then you got to add processing and DAC power to that. So they, they told me it's around 30, 35 watts. So you're looking at about 760 watts, which is less than the 780 watt rating. And it doesn't violate the fact that I can drive this receiver at more power when I do my all channels driven test. Now, another thing about what that IEC standard says is whatever rating you put on that back panel, that receiver can't go beyond 10% higher than that rating under normal operating conditions. When I do my all channels driven test, that's not a normal operating condition. In no way, when you ever use a receiver product, are you gonna run continuous sine wave sweeps simultaneously to every speaker at full power. You would be blown out of the water, it'd be so loud, you wouldn't be able to handle that. Music doesn't operate on a constant sinusoid like that. It's, very dynamic, very program uh, dependent. It's not a constant tone. So, but we use these test measures to do a standard way of measuring amplifiers. So I wanted to go over another example with you. I wanted to go over my beloved Denon AVR 5805. As you guys know, I've said many times before, that's my favorite all time receiver. I had a love affair with that receiver and it was such, parting with such sweet sorrows. I was weeping and crying when I had a eventually get rid of that bad boy. Um, so that's a very old receiver. That's from like 10, 15 years ago. That was a monster, 100 pound monster, 170 watts times 10. And I noticed on the back of that receiver, it doesn't have power consumption. It has 13 amps. So they rated power consumption in really in VA, in amperage, okay? So I was like, well, how did you come up with 13 amps? Well, they told me they ran it through an older standard called UL 1492. So they said they took the 200 watt rating because that receiver was actually rated for 200 watts a channel at six ohms. They derated that 70%. So they took 140 watts was what they were using for the derating factor. Now, when they did that, um, one eighth power of 140 watts is 17.5 watts. Again, divided by a 0.17 efficiency, that's 102.9, 103 watts a channel. You gotta multiply that by 10, okay? So right there, you're up to about 1,064 watts. Then you had the processing power on top of that. But now, if you wanna convert that back to amps, you actually, you actually have to go and do a power factor correction, which in most cases with linear supplies is about 0.75. So you see when you add up all the numbers, it comes to about 12, I think it comes to actually, it comes to about 11.82 amps, but then they also have a switched power supply or a switched outlet on the back. So you have to add an extra amp to that. That's how they came up with that 13 amp rating. But in reality, that receiver can actually put out more power than that 13 amp. So that wasn't even a max power consumption. That thing was a beast. So I just wanted to give you two examples there, but I also wanted to talk to you more about what happens in the case when you have an amplifier that has higher efficiency? And this is why we've been talking so much about class D amplification. We're big champions now of class D. It's going to take a while for the industry and for consumers in general to, to accept the fact that you can get state of the art performance now with class D 
that is every bit as good as class AB, but it's way more efficient and it counts even more. It's more important at the low power levels like I showed you because at the low power levels with linear AB amps, they're just dissipating a shit ton of power because those, resist, those uh, transistors are always conducting. Imagine now going from 20% efficiency of a class AB at low power levels to over 80% efficiency of class D. That receiver is gonna dissipate a lot less heat or more of that power is gonna go to the load. It's just a better transfer method, especially when you're dealing with high channel densities and you're dealing with receivers that have 11 amplifiers, 13 amplifiers. There's some receivers now that have 16 channels of amplification. So I looked at the NAD, for example, the T778, and that receiver was rated, I think it was like 120 watts of channel times two or 85 times nine. And the back panel on that says 1,000 watts. Well, I was like, huh, that's interesting because you know, if you derate that, it should not come anywhere near 1,000 watts. What NAD was actually doing in that case was they were actually rating the back panel power as if that amplifier was being driven at full power because the efficiency when, when a class D amplifier is driven at full power, 90%, you know, that was about a 90%. That's a Hypex module, it's in the 90s. So that you're actually, in that case, you're getting that thousand watts on the back panel is really what that thing is capable of doing when it's being driven all channels. But they could not, they did not confirm with me whether or not that was done per the IEC protocol of running that receiver at four hours long. So I wasn't able to confirm that, but I did notice there's two giant fans on that receiver, so it's possible. But the bottom line is, if it doesn't say max power consumption, don't assume max power consumption. You can't always take the back panel power and work backwards to say, this is how much power I'm gonna have available to my speaker load. There's just too many variables at play here. And I really encourage you guys to read my article because I put a lot of research into this. I give more examples. I talk about dedicated two-channel power amplifiers, and I talk about just how I think we should be moving forward in the industry and how I think we should be deriving or coming forward to more efficient solutions like the Class D amplifiers. And um, I just wanted to clear the air because I know there's a lot of contention about how receiver power, how companies are lying about the power that they're giving you or the back panel is the absolute definitive of how much power you're getting when that's not always the case. I just gave you two examples. There's more examples in the article. I hope you guys found this interesting. Why don't you tell me about what receiver you're running and maybe what you thought, maybe you thought you were getting short change and maybe you're not getting as short change as you thought because now that power consumption on the back panel isn't your absolute maximum. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit relief. Don't forget about our Patreon channel, subscribe to it. Join our Patreon, there's lots of advantages to joining our Patreon. You get to access to us so we can answer your questions. You get to um, suggest video topics to us. We also put unique content there. I put you know access to articles like this way in advance before it goes online. But, and it also helps out the channel to support us and my lovely wife behind the camera at 2 a.m. you know so, so I can give her perks as well to stay up. Thank and, you. <laughs> all right guys I hope uh, this video was useful to you please give us some feedback thumb it up subscribe hit the like button and until next time my friends keep listening. Then take the rest, and the devil take the rest, and so we shall get rid of them all. Two. Oh, what are you still doing here? The video's over. Go home. Bye. All right, wait a minute. Since you're here, I'm just thinking about this whole topic about the power and receivers. Just because I showed and I proved that the receiver back panel power rating can be exceeded when all the amplifiers are driven at full power, doesn't mean that the manufacturers could go and continue to cheat the power ratings. We're gonna be watching you. That's why it's so important to read our reviews, look for our measurements, so you know how much power all channels driven the receiver that you're looking at buying is actually delivering. Well, that's it, my friends. All right, now make like a tree and get out of here.
Let me know when you're ready. Okay, hit, hit record. I'll just go. Is it going? You sure? Okay. Who's lying? Is the receiver company lying? Nah, I don't like that. Stop it. You could use part of that as B-roll. Okay. Okay. You guys ever wonder about how when you buy a new channel? Great for B-rolls. Okay, ready? <laughs> okay. So that's one example I wanted to give you. Now we look at, hold on one second, I need water, hon. 